we are back. We are back. And to discuss the very surprising topic, a lot of people are like, what the hell is Preston talking about with regards to um, how Israel and Palestine created the Hound and Skaha's Mo Kondak? Um, and, uh, you know, this isn't any trick and this isn't any like comparing of themes or anything like that. This is like George R. R. Martin's writing um, and where these characters like come from. Um, so in 1988, uh, George R. R. Martin published a wild cards novel called Aces Abroad. Um, and the year is a very important thing here because keep in mind, <laughs> the world has changed a lot since 1988. I mean, he's probably writing this in 1987, but, um, you know, when you think about, uh, the, 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 the snitch, um, conflict between the star belly sneeches and the plain belly sneeches. Um, it's, it was a very different time. I mean, 1987, 1988, like just in 1983, Anwar Sadat had been assassinated by, by Islamic Jihad for, for like making peace with Israel. And this is years before the assassination of Rabin in 1995, which essentially the assassination of Rabin essentially like ends the, the, uh, ends any hope for like um a palestinian state <laughs> you know all of these things that 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 have happened that are now so far in the past you know before like the days of of electing netanyahu and the and advancement of acceleration of of uh of um uh um settlements and things like this um but nonetheless it is 1988 and uh, George R. R. Martin puts out puts out wild cards for Aces Abroad. Now, the um, keep in mind, wild cards. The story is it's kind of X Men, but the the background of it is an alternate America where back in the forties, um, the uh, a wild cards virus descended upon America, descended upon the world, and which most people with the virus died and then those that survived most became um hideously deformed uh and and they call these jokers and then the the rare few um of them became what they call aces which are essentially just superheroes you know they've got whatever powers and so you've got this world filled with jokers <clears throat> a few superhero aces and the rest of the world and um, it's it's now the superhero world, but it's also a completely alternate uh, alternate history. And so in Aces uh, Aces Abroad, um, there is a uh, a world tour where the, the 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 hero aces are brought around to different countries, and going with them is a uh, a Joker, a deformed guy who has like a big elephant snout named Xavier Desmond. Um. And what's fascinating about there, there's a story that's it's cut up in little pieces and put in between the other stories that are written by other authors. But the, the, the stories in between are all written by George R. R. Martin. And collectively, they're called From the Journal of Xavier Desmond. And Xavier Desmond is, um, it's fascinating because it's kind of the, the, the closest you're going to get to George R. R. Martin just sort of honestly writing about his own politics. Um, granted, it's through the through the mouth of Xavier Desmond, but he says things that, you know, if someone, he says things that are enlightened enough that if someone, like no one would write something so enlightened if you were not as enlightened, you know? Um, and so there, it's it's interesting. It's at least George R. R. Martin's political p opinions in the year 1987, 1988. Uh, and so it's it's a fascinating little thing. And and I always there is um a quote near the beginning when he when when the group goes to Guatemala, and I use this a lot when I talk about Ice and Fire, in which Xavier Desmond says, Why must we draw these lines, these fine distinctions, these labels and barriers that set us apart? Ace and Nat and Joker capitalist and communist, Catholic and Protestant, Arab and Jew, Indian and Latino, uh, and on and on everywhere. And of course, true humanity 
is to be found on our side of the line, and we feel free to oppress and rape and kill the other, whoever they might be. Um, so, right there, you can kind of see George R. Martin's political opinions, at least in the year 1987-1988, that he believes that nation, state, ethnicity, religion are all kind of imagined concepts, um, and that we create others and we artificially kind of, uh, um, you know, otherize and make, make people the enemies. And that, like, you know, really, if we were enlightened, we'd drop all of these pretenses and see people as people. Um, now, in Aces Abroad, the later Xavier Desmond does go to Jerusalem. And it's a different history. And it's a history in which Palestine won the, um, the war of Israeli independence. Israel is created as a, as a nation state, but Palestine controls and has autonomy over a lot of land as well. So there's two nation states. It's essentially a two state solution kind of where Jerusalem itself is, is, um, administered by the UN, which is funny because that's kind of what was on the bargaining table during like Camp David Accords in the nineties. Um, but George R. Martin like has that happen to to Israel Palestine when writing in eighty seven eighty eight you know so he then um, while so even though the that's the setup he barely talks about Israel Palestine barely talks about the star belly snitches and the plain belly snitches instead he's created a a, a new stand in where these jokers, these mutant people that were created by the, the, um, the wild cards virus, they exist everywhere. And so they have a ghetto in Jerusalem. And so there's a joker quarter. Um, if you've ever been to Jerusalem, you know that in the old city, there are, there are four quarters. There's a Jewish quarter, a Muslim quarter, a Christian quarter, and an Armenian quarter. And, um, so in this world, there's now a joker quarter. <laughs> okay. And, there's terrorist attacks all over the place, back and forth between Palestinians and Israelis, but there's also tel pal uh, terrorist attacks between jokers and non-jokers. And so the jokers are now a stand-in for another party, um, equal and equivalent to the, the, the star belly snitches and the plain belly snitches. Um, so the, uh, and so Xavier Desmond ends up meeting the head of this terrorist organization that exists in the in the quarter called the black the black dog or the hound he walks around with a bit with a dog mask and he's called the hound okay now other than that the endings with sandra the the, the parallels to sandra clegane kind of end um sandra clegane is also physically based on a on a character called breton braith from dying of the light who has half of his face burned um, and is mutilated, but then the character of the Hound is, is kind of taken from this from this uh, journal of Xavier Desmond. So the Hound is the leader of this terrorist organization called the Twisted Fists, um, but he doesn't have the personality of Sandor Clegane in any in any sense. The only thing about that's kind of similar is that he's called the Hound and he walks around in a, in a big metal dog mask, and then he switches the dog mask off so that other people can be the Hound if he wants them to be, which of course happens to the Hound. More similar in, in a more similar sense, he's he's much more like Skahas. And if you read the story, the Ska it's he is essentially the Skahas character. And he he get he quote he says a lot of things that are very that, that are almost straight out of Skahas's mouth. Um so for instance, he leads an organization called the Twisted Fists, which even though they're the terrorist organization, you can kind of like start thinking about the Sons of the Harpy, Brazen Beast like situation and the conflict in, in Marine. And of course the conflict in Marine is about this escalation, right? This, this escalation between these two groups, the, the terrorist organization of the sons of the harpy and the, the oppressive group that yes, they're in power, but they're, they're no better um, than the sons of the harpy, which is the brazen, brazen beasts, which you can start seeing the parallels to the Sneetches, you know? And um, 
the hound in this story actually you actually has a policy of any death of ours means five deaths of theirs you know and it's like whether they're related to the people that actually killed their their man or not so you you instantly see this you're like five for one escalation like as like ridiculous like idea like that's just stupid like of course that's not going to work now what's funny when you actually go to the and of course like we're dealing with masks and the changing of masks and like Skahas himself walks around in masks but then can switch his mask with the brazen beast masks as, as well so it's very it's very um it's very obvious once you once you read it. and i do recommend that anybody that people read the the journal of xavier desmond it's it's easy to find online it's on youtube it's 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 everywhere but um what's but what i find hilarious about um the journal of xavier desmond and kind of the birth of of skahas as a character i mean it's like i say the hound appears but it's not re the hound is not really the other than the fact that it's a metal helmet and he's called the hound but the the character of skahas is very clearly this guy and um what's funny about the the hound in the story with the five to one escalation and how you're supposed to be like well that's that's ridiculous that's never going to work that's a bad idea um is that skahas who is this he actually only has a one for one policy in, in a dance with dragons if you remember his whole policy with danny is like for every brazen beast that dies we kill a hostage and and in that situation even on a one-to-one -one, you're supposed to recognize that skahas is an idiot of course that's not going to work of course that's going to escalate right so like George R. R. Martin actually even like lowered the number from five to one to one to one. And even when sitting on a one to one situation, we're supposed to look at Skahas and and be like, man, what an idiot. Like what an idiot. Right. Like, oh, my God, what a bad idea. And so you you have this like exact situation where we're talking about today with the star belly sneeches and the plain belly sneeches where Every time we see these actions, whether by the plain belly sneeches or the, or the star belly sneeches, any from the anyone from the outside instantly goes, oh, my God, that's a bad idea. Oh, my God, that's not going to work. In the same sense that, like, you look at Skahas and being like, oh, my God, like your policy on dealing with, like, the Sons of the Harpy is not going to work. Like, do not do that. Do not do that. Um, but uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, but, uh, <laughs> did I miss talk of the news? No, we are talking a song of ice and fire, but this is essentially, essentially where, what, what I'm talking about when I, when I say that the, um, uh, the, the, that the, the conflict created these characters because they did. And so when, when, when looking at the Marine chapters in the future, like remember that Skahas is a creation of a is of the, the creation of the black dog from the hound a a stand-in for the israeli-palestinian conflict um and a, it's a it's a george r martin comment about escalation and how to deal with um uh i don't know like um how to deal with with insurrections terrorism um, occupation, colonialism, how, you know, it's a statement on all of these things. I mean, he tries, George R. Martin tries to make these universal. I mean, when people read A Dance with Dragons, they were all like, he's talking about Iraq, isn't he? And, and George R. R. Martin's, you know, like, oh, actually, I don't know. He, he, he's, you know, he, he mostly talks about Vietnam, but in this situation, like Skaha's Mokandak is specifically from this wild card story about Israel-Palestine.